Here is my NBA Jam four player cabinet. It's a great way to play all your three player and four player games all in one machine. Please leave a like if you like arcades while the intro plays. For my 1,000th subscriber giveaway contest, all you need to do is like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and you have a chance to win this Darth Vader number three, first appearance of Dr. Afra, 9.8 in a CGC. Good luck, everyone. How's it going, everybody? My name is Jordan, and welcome to Basement Collectibles. And if you like arcade machines, comics, toys, and movies, please consider subscribing for more great content. So this cabinet is the same cabinet I used for my light gun video. All I do is I switch the marquee over in the control panel. So it's still running off the same computer, but now I have a different setup for the four player control panel. I also tried to replicate the NBA Jam artwork as close as I could with still using some buttons that I need for MAME. When I was designing the four player cabinet, I was on the fence of do I make it into a Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet, or do I go with a sport cabinet? And the reason why I picked the NBA Jam, it was one of my favorite games back in the arcade when I was growing up, but it also has three buttons. The Turtles only has two, so with having three buttons, this will allow me to play a lot more three to four player games. So for the NBA Jam control panel, I've kept it all the same except for I've added three extra buttons. So the additional buttons are, the blue button is to enter the game, the black one is for settings and also to pause the game. This is really important. If you can add a pause button to your arcade machine, this helps out from either the kids playing or any family members or friends where they just need to stop, take a break, or go to the washroom. Definitely important to add a pause button if you can on your control panel. And also the red button is for the to exit the game. So I've designed it where to exit out of the game, you have to hold it for a couple seconds because it seems like, you know, with the kids and their friends, they like to press a lot of buttons. So if they're actually in a game, at least they have to hold on to the button a little bit longer instead of just exiting out of the game automatically by accident. So I'm going to just take this control panel off now and head over to the other table. That way I can show everybody just how all the wiring works. The iPack is set up to via USB to go into the computer and also go through the pricing of how much this costs to get this up and running. So I just pulled off the top of the control panel for the NBA Jam cabinet and I just wanted to go over quickly the underside of the control panel. Sorry for the wiring management, I haven't tightened up anything, but just wanted to show that everything's controlled by this, it's called an iPack, it's from Altamark. So the iPack 4 is a keyboard encoder. So just say that if you were hitting button number one for player one, it would show up as the letter A on a keyboard. So all it's doing is just telling the main machine that this button's gonna be A, the first joystick's gonna be up, down, left, right. So from the iPack, that cost me about $60. The uh, joysticks cost me $15 each. So with the buttons, with the, like I said, the iPack, the buttons, the plexiglass, the material, cost me about $200. And the artwork, the custom artwork that I had made was about, I think it was about $50. And the marquee for the NBA, job, NBA Jam cabinet came to $25. So again, sorry for the wiring management, but just wanted to show everybody that uh, this is, you know, I've never wired before. I know it looks really bad right now, but everything's working. There's a daisy chain, so it's a ground wire to each button and joystick input. And once everything's plugged in, there's one cord that leads out of the iPack that plugs into the computer via USB. And from there, that's when you can go into your settings in MAME or any emulator that you're using. And then to tell that emulator what buttons are which. So again, up, down, left, right, A, B, C, um, through the settings. So just wanted to give everybody a quick overview of the bottom of the control panel. So for my top five four player games for the arcade machine, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would have to be the 1B to, one, to my 1A for NBA Jam. So for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, I remember playing this in the arcade all the time. It was nice that you were able to select your own turtle and play with three of your buddies or strangers for that matter. But I remember spending a lot of money on this and then finally it came out for the Nintendo so you could get this game and finally finish it too without spending countless quarters. Turtles in Time was also an amazing game. I didn't play it much in the arcade machine, but when it came out for Super Nintendo, I think this was my favorite Turtles game. Buddies and I would play it all the time. We would see how fast we could go through and finish the game, because they'd always show you at the end your time. So to this day, at the cottage, we're still playing Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. But if you haven't played Turtles in Time, and if you ever see an arcade machine, definitely give this a try. This is really fun. Just the graphics alone, throwing the foot soldiers, anybody at you off the screen. Such a great and fun game. 
Number three on my list has to go to Simpsons. This was such a fun game. Really loved the TV show growing up. When I was working at Cineplex Odeon, they still had this game. Still somewhat of a lineup for this as well. Such, um, you know, you eat so many quarters on this machine, but uh, really fun. Probably only made it to about the you know first three levels. But uh, now that I have it, uh, we can just keep on playing. It's nice to finish it with my kids. Number four on the list has to go to X-Men. I remember the cabinet with all the characters on the side art. Um, big fan of Marvel, so when this finally came out in the arcades, I was really excited to play it. Besides the four-player game, there's also a six-player game with two screens. I've never actually got to play it, but I've seen plenty of photos and a couple people on certain groups that have bought it for their house. So if you ever come across a six-player, definitely give it a try. I can't imagine how fun that would be to have, obviously, five extra buddies with you playing this game. And number five on my list has to go to NFL Blitz. So any of the NFL Blitz games, they didn't take football too seriously. It was really fun. I remember playing this at the bars at this point because it came out around, you know, in the late 90s. I think it was 99, 2000, as you saw in the title. So I remember playing this more at the bar with Golden Tee and that, but definitely a fun game. Again, having four players, you know, two on each side, such a fun game, just like uh, NBA Jam. So NFL Blitz for my uh, number five spot. Another notable four-player game is Hit the Ice. I really enjoy the sports games on the arcade, especially baseball games. So for a hockey game, again, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Really fun. A lot of things going on in the game. Just nice two-on-two -two hockey. I remember playing it more for the Super Nintendo when it was out, but uh, Hit the Ice is definitely a notable to uh, add to your list of games to play for four-player. So for my top three three-player games for the arcade, Number one has to go to Rampage. There are two Rampage games for the arcade machine. There's one from the 80s, and there's also Rampage World Tour. This is a really fun game in my household. I guess just the easy concept of just eating everything, destroying everything. But uh, we haven't finished this game. It just feels like it goes on and on. You just go through certain cities, and it just keeps on going. But a really popular game, really fun. If you haven't tried Rampage, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Number two on the list has to go to Alien vs. Predator. Alien vs. Predator is made by Capcom. It's just a side-scrolling fighting game. Really fun game. I'm a huge 80s horror fan, so anytime I can have aliens and predators in the same game fight each other, I'm all for it. I've definitely finished this a few times, so definitely uh, give it a shot if you haven't tried it. Number three on my list has to go to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. This is actually a very expensive cabinet, so if you ever find this in wild for a low price, Pick it up if you can. PCB boards are worth hundreds of dollars on eBay and that. This is a really fun game. I've only played it a few times in the arcade, but now that I've had a chance to play it at home, the music's great and it's really fun and the kids really like it. So that's it for this video, everyone. Appreciate you watching. Thanks again for all the new subscribers. And if you're new here, please like, comment, and subscribe on your way out. And I'll see everybody again on the next video. Take care.